Okay, so we're writing linear equations given a point and a slope. We're going to use something called point-slope form of the equation. And that looks like this, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It's very important that you get that down on your paper. What are you doing? What's that? Oh, fixing it so it's better. Okay, got it. I'm talking to Gavin now, you guys, in case you're wondering who I'm talking to. And uh, Lucy said, Louie, FaceTime later. FaceTime later. Okay. Anyways, so we're going to do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where m is the slope. That's the same as it was before. And x1 comma y1 are the given point. <clears throat> okay, very important that you get this down. Cyrus, let's go. Get it down. Because I want you to have this in front of you. This is something that most people don't remember off the top of their head, and then it messes with them when we take our quiz. So we're going to use this form, and we're going to plug in all of our given information. Oops, come on, open up pens. Oh, that's not going to work. So it's going to be black ink the whole time. Okay. And we're going to transfer it to slope-intercept form. That means once we put everything into the point-slope form, we're going to move it around, manipulate it, and get it into slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is the y equals mx plus b. If you notice, the, x, the y and the x are in both of the equations. The slope is in both equations. The b is what we manipulate around to find. Okay? So let's try one. This becomes the 2, 1 is x1, y1. So I go y minus the y1, which is 1, equals negative 1 times x minus the x position. Did you get it all down, Cyrus, or did I move that too quick? Let's make sure you got that in there. Sorry about that. You sure? Okay. Okay. All right. So, again, I need to manipulate it and move it around so I get the Y alone. And to do that, I'm going to start by distributing the negative 1. So that's negative 1X plus 2. And then I'll get the y alone by adding the one on both sides and I end up with y equals negative 1x plus 3. That's the final form of my answer. So it's put it in the spots and then move stuff around a little bit. There are two sp sort of special cases that we're going to get to but there's also times when we're going to experience fractions in the problem. And remember at the beginning of the year we talked about using your calculator for fractions. If you don't know how to work with fractions, just keep them improper when you're done. And that's going to come into play here as well. So I'll plug this in. This is my x1, y1, that point that's given. So it goes y minus 2 equals 1 third x plus 3. How did the plus 3 come into play? Because it's minus negative 3. Then I can distribute y minus 2 equals 1 third x plus what's 1 third times 3? 1. Mm -hmm. Yep, 1. Yep. And then I'll add the 2, add the 2, and y equals 1 third x plus 3. It doesn't always come out to be x plus 3 at the end. It just happened that both of those first two were. But like I said, there's going to be two special cases. And so these, these follow a totally, totally, totally different rule. When we have an undefined slope, 
Undefined, remember, is a straight up and down line. It only crosses the x-axis. So when I write my equation, it doesn't matter what else is there. The only thing I care about is the x. This is my equation of that line. Done and done. And that's because this is an undefined slope. A zero slope is, what's that? It's just the y. For the zero slope, it's very similar, except for, again, this is a horizontal line that only crosses the y-axis. And just like Barrett said, all we care about is the y. And so I say y equals negative 5. So when you see undefined and zero, those are nice ones. They're easy. And guaranteed you're going to have one of those when you do your work. When you see the other ones, they can be a little bit more difficult. When we have a full point and a slope. And again, like I said, there are going to be instances where there's fractions. So we have two more to run through, and then I'm going to let you guys try it on your own. Remember on the point, it's x1, y1. So I just plug it into the equation. y minus y1 equals the slope. Oops, I messed up there because what I really, I'm going to start all over with that. I go y minus y1 equals 3 fourths the slope times x minus x1. x1 is the x point of the number. y1 is the y point of the number. So I distribute y minus 1 equals 3 fourths x. What is 3 fourths times 3? This is, again, where your calculator with fractions might come in handy. 3 fourths times 3, 9 fourths. Nice job. Cyrus knows his fractions. Good work. So 3 fourths times 3. That's not a pretty fraction, and it's okay. I'm okay with it. You should be okay with it. But then I'm going to add 1, add 1. Again, this is where your calculator might come in handy. I'll end up with y equals 3 fourths x. Are you sure? Because it's a negative 9 fourths. So negative 9 fourths plus 1. Negative 9 fourths plus 1. So that'd be negative 9 fourths plus 4 fourths if I'm going to do it by hand. Negative 5 fourths, yep. And so then that's my final answer. Again, my whole point is to get it into y equals form. If I have a zero slope or an undefined slope, my job is super easy. But if I have the points and the slopes there, I'm going to have to work through it with my point slope form. Our last one is here. Let's plug it in. y minus y1 equals the slope, which is negative 9 sevenths times x minus x1. Again, minus a negative becomes a, a positive. And then I distribute. Use your calculator. Negative 9, 7, x minus what's 9 sevenths times 3? Waiting on Cyrus to give us the answer. Hmm. That's what? A one-time thing. That's all I get from you, hey? Okay. Anybody? Nine-sevenths times three. Keep it as three over one, remember? And then make sure it's a pr negative twenty-seven-sevenths. And then we would... Add 4 and add 4. So y equals negative 9 sevenths x minus 1 seventh. Great. Again, the fraction part, don't be afraid of it. You've got those calculators. I told you the calculators that you can use that you can plug it in. Those are very helpful. But now you're going to work on some practice problems.
for those of you virtual, just um, do your work on a separate sheet of paper and share it with me. Those of you in class, obviously, when you're done, put it in the basket.